Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So this is going to be a bit of a catch up of what I've been uh, working on. And you'll see this is one of my triclopses here all painted up and finished. Uh, this is the leader guy. So actually did a fair bit on these more than I usually do. A bit of like oil washes and pigments and everything. You can see the kind of effort put into the base. I think it actually, it shows anyway, especially for models that are quite, you know, cheap and actually don't have a ton of detail in them. I think I maximized it. I am going to admit that the eyes are a bit goofy, but you know what, eyes aren't really my speciality, so I think they kind of work, and I'm glad I went for this idea here. On the top they all have these little feathers, just to kind of bring them together in their regiment. And um, the, the feathers are just from really cheap, like craft store, but I went through and put some um, chalk pigment to through it, like a chalk pastel, like black, just to kind of darken it so it's not so bright. Um, and you see, I think they turn out pretty well, like pretty rough and ready, to be honest. But with the techniques of the wash, it's just like basically a base coat of the color you'd like in acrylic paint. And then the wash was, I think, a mix of a purple and a brown. Maybe I'd say it was just a brown oil oil paint wash. Um, and it actually mucky, muckies them up and makes them all like grim dark and that kind of idea. But... The fact I went for kind of brighter colours with the orange and that um, has made it pop out again because I then went in afterwards and highlighted it just with the same colour again, just to kind of to the raised areas. And I'm pretty happy with them actually. I had a lot of fun with the bases, like I said, with different kind of pigments and that. You can't really see it 100%, but they look quite realistic, honestly, with the different shades of greys and browns. Um, I think the little bit of effort goes a long way. And working with the scale, like I said, there's not a ton of detail on them. Like that cloak is pretty messy, to be honest. But as it goes, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know, this is actually a fair bit of effort to put into a, a paint job. So I'm I'm happy enough with them. Like, look at this guy's eyes. You know, <laughs> he's pretty, um, he's not too impressed looking, but he's got a bit of character. So that's those guys finished. That's another kind of little regiment finish. And you'll see there. So that's the 28 mil guy from reaper so they are quite big but if you can imagine they'd be like kind of more agile maybe ogres or something like that i'll go to the next thing here i actually have a ton to get through so i might speed up you know this is the clay golem i was talking about in the last episode and i just painted them up really simply and you'll see what i really like is this bit of texture that was added with this texture paint uh one sec i'll get it this stuff here the kind of crackle paint stuff that different companies will uh, will offer so this is a green stuff one that i have green stuff world and it creates that kind of nice crackle effect i think there's other ways of doing it with pva glue but for handiness i just use that and i think it's pretty cool on kind of clay golems and stuff so i went ahead and made another one as well this is kind of a different shade but uh, he's in more of an action pose but yeah they're cool like they're really simple to make they're literally like cut from this this is like mad cheap old crappy like hand-me-down figure you know it's quite flexible and literally you're just chopping away at it with the with a craft knife or that kind of thing and it creates that nice texture and you can kind of stick them back together to what kind of pose you'd like so they're quite quick as golems go uh what else i go i'll jump onto these next so these are the squigs i was working on still kind of work in progress but some of them i'm pretty happy with like this guy was a lot of fun it's so it's there's loads of squigs on like um Instagram and that where people go really mad with like uh, wet blending and stuff like that and I'm not a mad expert with that honestly as you might be able to tell by looking at these but I had a bit of fun with it like a little bit of effort goes a long way because they're quite there's kind of flat a lot of flat areas here that you can work with um, and go mad with the squig designs just because there isn't any that's like 100% oh there you know this breed of squig is pink and this one is blue you know there's nothing like that that I'm aware of um, so some of these, this one actually had a wash with a, a oil paint, um, a purple oil, oil paint kind of watered down into a wash. And you'll see some, these are different experiments of kind of wet blending. Maybe not the best, maybe not uh, something I should be showing off. But I'll, they're still working progresses, so, you know, don't judge me too hard yet. This one I'm pretty happy with, like, that's, it's quite subtle, but there's a nice little bit of. You know, transition there from the darker blue to the top, just with dry brush on the top, and I'll highlight them. This is something I have learned is wet blending is harder to do with cheaper paints. So you'll see here, this is quite, you know, on the top here with the orange. If it's going to focus for me, isn't fantastic. Yeah, you'll see. Look, that's, you know, not great. I would 
if I was going to try wet blend with these colors again, use like pigments like uh, paints with more pigment in them, and they seem to they seem to work better. But look, uh, you you can learn from my mistakes. We'll say. Uh, but here's a good tip. So I got my little boy some animals in um, in a set, and of course I I robbed some of them because they were quite good scale. So this <laughs> this is where I got these cattle. So really really simple, you know. I think they're pretty good scale. Like okay, this guy's pretty chunky. The barbarian's pretty chunky, but like that's pretty. That'll work, you know what I mean for for cattle. So you have a bull and a cow there, and really really simple paint jobs with a oil wash as well. So I'm kind of getting into these oil washes. Uh, they just add a little bit more to it. It's just brown, you know, then dry brush over and pick out some details and you're kind of away in a hack there. And there's some horses as well. The horse, I don't know, maybe that'd be like a pony. I think it could work, you know, maybe for a smaller, uh, smaller, you know, halfling or smaller human mount. But as, as like um, price goes, they're probably the best sets you can get. If you're prepared to, you know, you'll see you have to take off a load of mold lines and made in China's and stuff like this down the bottom. But uh if you're not too, you know, uh, uh, if you're not too perfectionist, we'll say about the sculpts, yeah, they're they're pretty great for the price. These guys are little fairies from last time, so a little kind of scene that created him. <laughs> Strange color as well. He was kind of a light turquoise, and then he got an oil wash as well. I think just because I had it when I was making these triclopses, he got it as well, and he's not very happy looking, but he's another one for the collection anyway. And this little potato man on his rock. <laughs> this guy has a lot of uh, character. If it will focus for me. I'm not sure if it's going to. It usually does when it wants to. But anyway, yeah. So, this little scene of him sitting on his rock here. And he's, uh, this thing I'm kind of experimenting here with creating the foliage or the leaf, the leaves and that of the plants. Just with some plastic. Really works and I think they're kind of like they're quite hard wearing like you know they're not made of some tin kind of paper or um, other options you can get are like really tin cut brass so I think these might last a wee bit longer and this guy as well just about finished I have to figure out his pupils but I like his um silly expression so he's kind of cool as well he got a wash as well you can see it just creates really like natural I don't know tones and kind of dulls everything down but gives it that nice mucky, I don't know, realistic fairy fantasy that, that I like with the style of, of the little guys that I'm making. Next one I'll go on to. This guy has been going on for a while now, but he's actually finished. The sculpt is actually finished. And I did some nice, you know, different texture work and everything on his base here. Bits and bobs. So that'll come come together really nicely when uh, when all painted on the coat. But before I sprayed him, I said I would do a video, just an update. That includes him. Just because you got, you know, sculpted here. You just got some fur. His claws, his mouth ended up looking like this. <laughs> so yeah, he's got these kind of fangs. He's got these teeth coming up and down. This really wasn't planned, but it kind of evolved as it went. So he'll be a lot of fun when he's done. Uh, just to see see what kind of colors I choose. But you know, it'd be another weird creature for the shelf anyway. Um, and it, you know, first experiment with the potpourri. So it is something I want to kind of experiment with more. And speaking of that, I suppose I'll go on to this kind of terrain you'll see in the back here, which was uh, there was a Christmas wreath lying around the house for ages, you know, with bits and bobs like this on it and bits and bobs like pine cones, right? Really dried out pine cones. So I was like, OK, I'm robbing those because it's not been put away. It's free rain. I'm going to loot it. So these are some bushes made out of pine cones. Uh, just put on a base of hot glue. That's uh, Fomex and... It's just some um, green tea over it then again. So I think this will be fine with it once they kind of spray up and put some quick paint on them. Just some quick bushes, you know. Because they have a good shape to them and scale-wise, you know. It's an obstacle, you know. It, it blocks line aside and that kind of thing. And it's quite modular. You know, there's only one on a base, so there's lots of options there. Uh, what else did I go with? Yeah, so you see these in the background. These are the pine cone trees. That, um, they're quite high fantasy, I suppose. Originally when I put them on, the the tree trunk, I was going to put the green tr uh, green tea over again. So this would be more looking like foliage, you know. But I said, you know, I'm not really bothered because they look kind of cool. <laughs> you know, they look kind of strange. And I think they might work um, as just strange fantasy trees. Like, I'm not trying to make them into realistic trees. Like, this is a birch and this is a, an oak, you know what I mean? So, you know, and they're not huge either. 
because they don't have to be huge. So that's kind of an experiment that's going on. The the green, this green was just, I just added a bit of paint to the, the filler. I had a mix of uh, polyfiller and PVA that I was using just to strengthen up the tree, brand, uh, tree trunks here. And then I just went crazy and put it everywhere just to strengthen things and kind of seal it up a little bit. And I had some um, coconut fibers going through it as well just to add a tiny bit of texture. Uh, I'll probably do more texture over, but just for, for more lumps and bumps for, you know, for when it's getting dry brush, it'll pick up nicely, you know. And this is the last one. This is actually the first one I did, but yeah, the uh, the idea is there. It's quite high fantasy tree, you know what I mean? It's not huge, just to have a variation. Um, and then at the same time, I did, I just went mad and a bit of foam X and this is just XPS foam. It'll probably be just be rocky outcrop, I'll do some foliage and maybe um, some little plants and everything in this ground. It's just another obstacle, you know what I mean? But so there's a little bit of train going on at the same time. I'm kind of experimenting with the texture that I want to put on the bases. So this is kind of a combination of things, you know, coconut fiber, um, different gradients of sand and that. But mostly these kind of plants, just with the plastic. You'll see, literally, it's just little strips of plastic. Now, I probably didn't come up with this. I've probably seen it somewhere else, but I think it works. You know, maybe you could get more fancy with it and make little ferns and everything. But this this works for me. And it's quite like hard wearing and once it's glued in you put a bit of the baking soda or baking powder or whatever it's called that that old trick and it 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 works really well like you know um okay nearly there i got what did i get in ebay from ebay <clears throat> i got some little sprues just so some fantasy guys from one of my favorite sellers on ebay he's he's based in britain and uh to be honest he was very good i was asking questions about brexit and then you know postage and everything like that and he was really quick to respond and everything so um, I would, I'd recommend them, but uh, I suppose if you want to ask me, I'll I'll send you a link. But yeah, so these guys were just some crosswomen, really fancy crosswomen, and they actually have like really cool heads as well, like that have a bit of emotion in them with big feathery hats and everything. But I wanted to make something a little bit more silly, like crazy high fantasy. So yeah, they're all kind of based up there. Uh, I have five of them, you know. And they're kind of multi-piece. They're not superposable. The body and the legs are one piece. And then the arms are separate. And they have options for uh, some kind of rifles as well. In the same um, sprue. And there's six on the sprue. And there, it was only like four or five euro. Like I think that's quite good. And then you have some extra bits as well for the bits box. So that's that's always great. Because I'm going to have all these great little heads then to play with later. And mix and match. You know it's cool. But anyway. So the, the, the idea was to make these a bit more high fantasy. And so they're going to get these big circles on her head but the, the spheres actually are going to be just giant eyeballs so they're going to be the best marksmen because they're literally just giant eyeballs with crossbows um, and it's going to be a challenge to paint up the eyeballs because like I said earlier in the video I'm not super great or confident with eyes uh, maybe it's just as simple as I need to get a better reference but that's the idea you'll see so there's five there there's another one in the pack I might do him as well and the bases are just uh, 25 mils with with I have a little cut off the foam excess to raise them up and then that's polyfilla and PVA and then there's a little bit of what is that some kind of tea as well that's actually tea from like a lion's tea bag that I took out just to add a little bit of texture they'll probably get a bit of sand on them as well but that's the plan and they're going to be super like funky fantasy like you'll see their clothes are fancy out okay this thing I need to get some kind of better setup lads don't I there you go there you go so yeah, you see all their frills and their different clothing, so that that could be a lot of fun. I say a lot of fun, but it also probably means a lot of different colours, which means I'm going to get turned off from painting them, if I'm honest. But look, there I, there I said it, I'm honest. But yeah, this is great because this is actually from the same Christmas read as I got the pine cones from. So it is class because you could, there's loads of these little spiky things, right? Obviously meant to be some kind of plant. Um, and you can use these for terrain, you could use these for spines on an, like a creature or monster. I think I'm going to use them for terrain, a reason, well, at some point, but there's like, I have tons, you know, this Christmas wreath, like I said, was just sitting there. <laughs> so, and we have other ones, like you'd nearly buy a new one every year anyway. But it might be something to look out for after next Christmas, because it'll be super cheap, you know, or even coming up to Christmas really soon, you know. And my little boy was playing with this and I said, oh, wow, look, those circles are actually, sorry, those spheres are in and around like perfect sizes for these guys as giant eyeballs so I was like perfection you know what I mean uh, so that was lucky and to finalize to finish off I will just show these little guys these guys are going to get sprayed as well 
Yeah, so this guy's all ready to go. Uh, he's going to be another weird creature for the wall. This thing got sculpted. I think I had a drink and sculpted this. It doesn't make any sense. Don't ask me. It's like a duck creature, a little tail. And it's got a cool kind of mohawk mullet thing going on. Yeah, there you go. Don't ask me any questions. But this guy is... He's going to turn around. It's a happy little slug. Yeah. With his, on his little base there. But um, yeah, big one guys is a uh, thousand subs. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, honestly, I think that's a lot down to Trent and Miscast sh sharing my post there a few weeks ago, which was huge. But I really appreciate it. And like I said, I would kind of recommend if people think they're making cool stuff, make a quick video. Like you, you can see how much effort is put into these videos. It's literally just me shining on for as long as I need to, to show what I made. So I would recommend other people do it. And I'd recommend... If there's other kind of channels as well, to give them some love, if they're making some cool stuff, you know. But uh, like I said, I'll be back to you again when uh, if I make something cool. And uh, yeah, cheers. Cheers for watching, cheers for subbing, and uh, I'll catch you again. Good luck.